Welcome to EUMDG.com. On this web doc, by Gemma Rosie, you will find a dozen of video interviews, with development experts across Europe, as well as several links to relevant websites and documents. For the presentation today, we'll start by showing you, a quick video about DMDGs, followed by the main story about EU's aid commitments, and then finish up with some Vox Pops, shot in different European cities. See tight and enjoy the videos. In 2000, the EUN's member states joined other nations at the Millennium Summit in a pledge to fight poverty and save millions of lives. Eight goals were agreed to be achieved by 2015. The MDGs There remains tremendous urban, urban poverty. The big cities like Kinshasa or Lumbumbashi, people are very, very poor there. And I'm not talking about the type of poverty that we often describe in the developed world about not being able to buy a new car, new clothes. These are people that don't have money to buy medicines to send their children to, to a hospital or to get health care. People in Europe, for example, spend more on the lottery than they spend on ODA. ODA per European citizen is about 30 euros per person per year. So it's not a lot. One of the major problems today is that we all say that 50 billion of aid, European aid in that case, is too much money. If you want to get people out of poverty, to live in dignity, to be uh, dealing and addressing their own life, you need higher investment than the 50 billion euros that we provide through aid. The commitment that the European Union took is to allocate 0.7% of its gross national income uh, to development aid. So far the EU is about, has allocated half of that, so it's not good enough. But we need to, be, to put things into context. The EU went through one of the biggest economic crises ever. point seven percent of ODA of GNI is is a very on the one hand ambitious target compared to what giving has been in the past on the other hand it's a very low target when you look at the magnitude of inequities around the world the first thing that I think is worth noting is that the 0.7 commitment predates the MDGs it comes from a UN resolution from the 70s so it was agreed already 40 years ago and the uh, Millennium Declaration is 14 years. 
So that predated and then it's been reaffirmed in different declarations in the Monterey Consensus and at EU level in the Barcelona commitments and, and many others. The percentage as such is, is really tiny if we compare to the total public expenditure of many national governments and if we compare with the money that governments have invested in bailing out the European banks. Generally speaking, there's been a trend uh, of reducing aid even before the financial crisis in 2007, 2008, 2009, but definitely the financial crisis in, from 2007 to 2009 and the subsequent austerity policies since then uh, have uh, basically cut support for um, reaching that target. Uh, the Netherlands is still cutting budgets, education sectors are cutting their budgets and so on. So if you're talking to somebody in Belgium or the Netherlands or another country whether they should increase aid when, edu when funding to their own universities and health systems is being cut, which one are they going to choose, right? It's hard to uh, generate political sort of enthusiasm for, for for that objective when the more important issues for Europeans are under attack. It is not the, the crisis that led to this. It was before already. They never lived up to their commitment. We at the Development Committee were dismayed to see this, this lack of, of, uh, of, of consistent uh, attitude towards your own promises. Um, the reason for that is, of course, internal pressure uh, within a member states. Populations who say, listen, give the money to us instead of to, to the poorer countries. Um, you see how difficult it is for David Cameron in Britain to raise the budget of development aid, which he does. And you have to commend the British government for that. It's very difficult amidst the, the a huge opposition against this decision. It's a sound decision, it is an investment in poor countries that leads to stability, it leads to less refugees, it leads to economic growth, it leads to economic growth in our countries, it is our chance, their future. Oxfam has done research to show that actually to reach 2015, the goal by 2015, there is a 42 million euro funding gap for EU member states to reach. Um, unfortunately, you can see that traditional donors who have tried to reach this target, such as the Netherlands and Belgium, have actually decreased their, their funding. Surprisingly, um, public opinion within Europe has shown that at least 84% of EU citizens um, support development assistance. So the political will versus what the public, EU public says does not correlate. Well, the EU already does a lot in terms of trying to encourage uh, discussion uh, and uh, produces an annual report on uh, how the EU member states are doing, um, which is, uh, so it's a sort of a name and shame <laughs> approach, if you like, a peer review approach. Uh, they can't sanction them, no, that, uh, they're not in a position to do that. They're not legally binding commitments, so they're not able to take them to court or something. Um, but I think the, the uh, internal discussion in the group and the, the reviewing amongst each other and uh, so on is, is a big incentive. I think a lot of these issues about countries reaching the 0.7% of ODA as per the global commitment is about informing their, their constituents, their citizens of the country, what this actually does for them because spending somewhere else actually helps your own economy because then you have more partners to deal with in terms of trade and exchange of goods, services, um, people through migration in terms of skills transfer, technology transfer. So this is why the MGGs are important but this is also why ODA is important but also for people to understand that ODA is not that much and it actually is not enough to tackle the world's problems in developing countries. By next year, it will be extremely difficult to achieve this 0.7. And we believe, as the European Union, that we have to achieve this. And we still have a year to do, uh, a year to do that. Why do we believe that? First, because it's a commitment. So it's about the credibility of the EU. But as well, it's about trying to show that development aid assistance, it's not only about charity. We have to do it because it's a moral obligation and justice. So it's possible. The, the, you already have five countries that achieve them. So we know it's not going to be easy, but I think it's our role to try to respect as much as possible this commitment.
I don't know why we are holding on to that promise that is 40 years old and we are not keeping that promise. Either we have to drop the promise and become honest and say, sorry, we are not going to have that, or we, we fulfill it tomorrow because it's 0.7%. The crisis cannot be blamed. It's pocket money, it's change, it's pocket change for rich countries. It's not an issue of financial crisis or economic crisis, it's, a, it's an issue of political will. We want them to achieve that target because we were not the ones that set the target for them. They themselves set those targets and I think therefore they are morally bound to observe targets that they themselves have pronounced. According to the latest Eurobarometer survey, 66% of respondents saying that tackling poverty in developing countries should be one of the main priorities of the EU. 7 out of 10 believe that helping developing countries has a positive influence on EU citizens as well. Please join me as I roam the streets of Europe to find out more. This is Gemma Rosi for Vox Pop EU. I think that the EU citizens are interested in helping out developing countries. The sentiment is certainly there. Uh, it's just whether or not things actually get done or not, that's the real issue at hand. I really don't know. It's okay. Yeah, they might be interested, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's a polit political question, but I think the society wants to help also. But the politicians, I don't think that they are really very interested in helping other countries. European countries are interested. And I think because they want African countries to sort of have the same benefits as European countries. How can EU citizens help developing countries? Um, I think it would be the best to help people to help themselves. Uh, I think the EU citizens, or better, the EU itself can help uh, developing countries by opening up their borders, uh, getting rid of uh, a ridiculous uh, EU agricultural policies where they fund uh, uh, farmers that are already rich and basically keep poor countries poor because they can't uh, export their products. Development aid is very much also about marketing and giving a good impression on what you mean to do, but in, in the back, um, it's very much about economic interests, about keeping a position in, yeah, and deciding on how the resources are um, extracted and, and traded. Have you heard about the Millennium Development Goals? Uh, no, never. <laughs> Maybe something with economy, I don't know, with economics, but no, no idea. <laughs> Um, economy, security, I don't know. I think it's a big, uh, what do you say, big rally. I think it's something about uh, helping developing countries to develop more or something like that. Do you think the European Union is doing something to help the, the developing countries? Oh, I think there are some kinds of grants and so, but I don't think it if it helps really. So. They're trying, they're trying. Um, you, you hear a lot on news that they're uh, spending a lot of money um, yeah, on uh, poor countries to help them to, yeah, to better development and such things like this. What do you think should EU do to help more? Um, 
maybe to try, they need to try to be uh, more active and, uh, and more local, to go to the places and, and to see actually what's going on and, and uh, to help in that kind of way. And, we have a lot of history, uh, we, are, we are rich people, we are a rich country, it's necessary to help in the other, other country, poor, poor country, yes, why not? Sorry for my English. <laughs>